Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. In the chapel, we have Matthew 5, 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Yeah. Working on me this week, and you'll find out why uh, in the farmhouse. Uh, off the hook, I have nothing. But I do have some progress to show and another thing that I've started. Um, so... The first one to show you is, and this is silly. I saw this poncho and I thought it was amazing. And I like the style of it. But then I changed it. <laughs> it inspired me to make something different. Does it? So this is my inspiration right here. No, there we go. Okay. And I really liked it. It was awesome. And then... I thought it should have color, and then I thought the colors that I wanted to put together, I was like, eh. So I've taken that as an inspiration, and I've come up with this. But the back side looks like this. And when I'm doing the rounds, I, I have a stitch marker here. And this stitch marker is telling me where my center is. Um, so, and this one's holding a stitch. But as I go, it will be reversible. And I'm going to split the sides that come off. So you'll still have this over your shoulders. And then you'll have the poncho tight. And then at some point, I'm I'm going to do some little tacks down it so that it does stay together, but not, you know, it'll have the armholes and all of that. So I don't know exactly where I'm going to stitch yet, but it's going to be reversible. And I actually thought about joining these. And then I thought, mm, nah. <laughs> so anyway, I'm working both these ends. Um. It's not done with a worsted weight. It's not done with, you know, her pattern, obviously. But I did kind of make just some granny squares, unify them with a top trim, and then um, start my bottom rows. So the colors from the top of this will be the rows for this. Um, I've already started. I don't know if you can see it. I'm probably pulling out stitches. I'm trying not to. I have started on this side and I have the peach. And so it will go peach, green, white, the same as, as this right here. And this one will do the dark peach, the dark green, and the gold. I'm not real happy with the gold, but the gold was with this yarn that I started. And I was thinking that I may finish it out in a nice cream color when I run out of color. So it would only have the color at the top and then just do a nice cream color to make it cohesive. So yeah, I've been working on that. And like I said, I was inspired by that other piece, but not necessarily following a pattern. I just saw that picture and thought, Ooh, it's pretty. So yeah, I've been working on that one. And then, whoo, excuse me, I've also been working on this one. And this started out, again, I take inspiration and then just do my own thing, okay? Don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, but the round the world, you make all the three inch little squares, and then you put them together round and round and round so that, you know, makes a pattern. Um, the one thing about this is that it's meant to go this way because once you get it as big as you want, you just fill in the other edges to be square. Okay. So I have this one. I have it this far. I have one more square to attach on here. I have the square. I just don't have it attached. And then I'll have three of the pieces and I need to make one more and then I'll attach them all to uh, this right here. 
So I am making it round, round, and I need to make the blue that's on the corner. The other thing that I'm doing to kind of make it, and I like it, I think it adds just enough that it's fine. So you can see it really well, I think, here on this pink. But you can see that I'm sewing them all together or stitching them all together with the blue as well. So that not only is the blue from the center going out, I put a big old X in them, in it, so that the blue is in every row. And then it's all stitched together with the blue. So it's coming along. I've got one part, and like I said, it actually goes like this. But I've got it coming along, and I should have the pink row worked on um, in a few days, you know. I haven't had a whole lot of time to crochet. I thought about starting that wool that was in there to, for spinning. And just because I needed to go to my happy place, and unfortunately, um, I just have put it off. Uh, not really meaning to, but anyway, so that is all I have that I have been working on crochet. I still have the purple thing that I'm working on, but I haven't um, worked on it. I think I did maybe one row. It's not worth dragging out to show you guys. Um, so yeah, <laughs> there's that. The garden, I wanted to get out and, you know, in the field, uh, I wanted to get out and take a picture of the garden. It is doing amazing. There has been so much rain that everything is growing by leaps and bounds. Um, it it just, so it looks like we're going to have tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, roommate wanted okra. It is a southern thing. I'm not real whoopy with okra, but it is what it is. They fry it up. They bread it and fry it up. So, I don't know. Um, but we should have Tomatoes, cucumbers, and some zucchini squash, and some golden, uh, I think they're called California goldens. They're yellow bell peppers, okay? So they're yellow peppers that are sweet. And um, then this summer for my salads, all I got to do is buy lettuce, which I love that. So I'm hoping the bugs and that don't get to it. A lot of things have bloomed. And so I can see that they're starting to produce. I'm like, yay. But on the other hand, the storms have knocked off some of those blooms too. So <clears throat> we'll see how it goes. That's that's the bottom line is we'll see how it goes. And if I get salad fixings out of it, I'm happy with that. Um, it's cutting the food bill and it's fresh. It's, what do they say, uh, organic because I haven't done anything to it. I planted them out there and that's it. So, yeah, there's nothing on them. So, I'm really happy with the way it is progressing. It did get a slow start um, the first time the storms just beat them all up. This time, um, I've been able... And the... Oh, excuse me. The okra, I had bought a little thing of like six or eight plants. I can't remember which. And I put them out there spaced. Well, the storm killed all but like three. So I have three out there that are really tall. And then I found a package of seeds at a store, half price. I know I told you this. I went out there and made two rows. <laughs> Those things are already this tall um, within days because of all the rain and everything. They had sprouted and they look great. And I'm like, woohoo, I got my green thumbs on this year. Um, you guys know that in the past, sometimes the garden didn't go as well as I had hoped or as I had planned. So um, it's a great, great little garden. It's just two rows, but I'm happy with it. So, and like I said, I've got four bell pepper or golden pepper plants. And I'm sure those will produce enough peppers for us. Um, I've got three tomato plants. I had to buy two to replace some of the others. Um, I have one that's one kind and two that are another kind. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and then, like I said, I did plant a uh, zucchini. And I will leave one to make Henry his zucchini jelly. The refrigerator jelly. 
so he loves that stuff, and I always make him some every year. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that's all I have in the garden. I mean, there's nothing produce. I can't show you anything that's produced. They're flowering. They're being beat down by the storms. Um, they're hanging in there. Uh, the other thing that we have going on in the farmhouse is that, well, there's two things. First off, the ducks disappeared Monday night. Okay, so I don't know if something got them or if they wandered away and got themselves in trouble. Uh, they had always stayed on our property, so I don't think they wandered away. I think something got them. I, I don't know. I, I just don't know. And it's better to think that God took is taking care of them or found them a new home or, you know, or they'll, they'll find their way back. I don't know. So it is what it is. Um, but the weird thing is, is that, um, the last couple of weeks I've been really struggling at my job and not struggling to do the job. There is a lady up there that her and I, we're required to work very closely together and she screams and yells and flies off the handle for no reason. Um, she doesn't conflict resolve worth a hoot. If she has an issue with me, she embarrassed me in front of customers. She yells, screams. Um, Wednesday I went to, uh, our human resources, lady who is also our branch manager she handles all of it um and told her that you know I, I was having a little bit of an issue and I told her I was trying to handle it well Friday Thursday I didn't work with this lady Friday I worked with her and Friday morning she started screaming and yelling at me um just said a lot of things that were inappropriate imitated me made fun of me um, just in right out front where the customers and everybody can see. And I don't take very well to that. Okay. Um, if you have a problem with me, there is a way to go about it, but I really don't think it was a problem with me. I think she just needed to blow up. I don't know why, but she is one of these, and it's happened before. She goes fine for a few months and then she has to blow up and then she goes fine for, I can't do that. I can't guess which person is coming in to work with me. I, I can't, it caused stress. I got to where I wasn't sleeping. Um, I'd be, still be awake at three in the morning and have to get up at five 30. Um, I, I hadn't slept in days anyway. So Friday there was a blow up. The manager was off that day. So Monday I decided, okay, I'll go back. I had this Saturday off. I, I'll go back and, or no, I worked this Saturday. She didn't. And I was going to go in and talk to her again. And when I got there, this lady started coming at me again, screaming and yelling and, you know, telling me how I need to do this and I need to do that. Just stuff. Trying to change my personality. Um, I don't scream and yell. I don't carry on like that. Um, embarrassing me in public. Even my kids knew this. You don't do that. What happens out in public should be appropriate. You do not embarrass mommy in front of anyone. It's just not necessary, and I, I don't tolerate it. Well, she was screaming. I actually asked her three times if we could wait until the manager got in and have a discussion with her, and she would not let me be and just let me do my job until the manager got there. So I quit. If you have two personalities that are like that, that just can't work together, there's one that's always going to suffer. And it was me. And I just, since that day, it was Monday that I walked away. 
And I love the job, don't get me wrong. I just cannot work like that. Um, I, she could have screamed and yelled at me in private, and I wouldn't have had a problem with it. But screaming and yelling at me in front of, which I get that's, that's her personality. I don't know if she just doesn't know. I don't know. You, you never know anybody's circumstances. Maybe that's her circumstances at home. Maybe that's how they communicate. Maybe she doesn't know any other way. I get that, but I had already been to human resources once. I asked her to wait until we could do it properly. And I, I can't do that. I am too old to change my ways. My personality just doesn't, it eats me up and it's not a healthy relationship. And it, here's the way I look at it. If a man had been treating me like she had been treating me, everyone in my life would have been telling me to walk away. Um, so yeah, I, I prayed to God and just decided it wasn't for me. Um, so Tuesday, um, uh, actually Monday I started and I started a little job search and I have gone, this is Thursday that I am recording. Monday and Tuesday, I was just so frazzled. I was upset that I had walked away from that job. I loved that job. And so that kind of ate up at me. But I have since been called for, I go to another interview today for round two. I still have another interview with another um, vet clinic that had called me. And um, the one that I am, the one that has moved the fastest so I found it online, applied, was called. I applied Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon, they called me and said, can you come in tomorrow morning? I went in yesterday morning, went through the first interview. And they said, we will uh, set up a second interview if you make the second round. By yesterday, by the time that I had gotten home from the interview, I had a call back for a second interview. And I go today at 10 o'clock for a second interview. So, and it's with somebody totally different. So, I guess I'm switching jobs. <laughs> that is terrible. But, yeah. Um, RJ and the horses in RJ's world. Okay, so, as you know, RJ was run off the road by a semi. Um, we're not going to worry about whether they find that trucker. God will do what God is going to do. Okay. Um, hopefully he doesn't kill anybody. That, that's all we can hope. Um, so yeah. Um, RJ was sore the next day, kind of stiff, kind of whatever. He took the horses back to the chiropractor on Monday and got them chiropracted and they all seem to be doing very well. So it's been right at a week since they were run off the road and RJ is fine. It, he's, you know, um, I run up there, uh, what day was it? Tuesday, I believe, and picked up the printer that nobody can get to work. Only I can get to work. So yeah, I told him I said, I need to print resumes. So I got that. And then, um, yeah. Uh, it's been good. Uh, God is, I know that he makes the best of every situation that the devil tries to pull. Um, so I feel great. I, for the last, since Monday night, Monday after I quit, of course I was upset. Um, I've never just walked away from a job without having another plan. You know what I mean? Um, I just haven't, uh, I, it's not me. And so I normally give notice and blah, blah, blah. Well, God has taken and, uh, taken hold of the situation and he's making it, I'm going to say right for the lack of any other word. He's making it go his way. Uh, so 
I, I don't know. I'm just lost in thought. But Monday, after it all happened, um, I slept the best I've slept in weeks, probably months, to be honest with you. Um, because, like I said, this has been going on at work for months. And I just, I don't deal with it very well. I, I don't take it. Um, just for those that know when I get frustrated. And this stems back from my dad was a screamer and a yeller and a mean drunk. And he drank every night when he got home from work. He never drank at work. But man, the minute he got home, he had to have that in his hand. And by the time he went to bed, he was drunk. Um, but he was a screamer and a yeller and a hitter. And it didn't take much to set him off when he'd been drinking. So, and I know that's where this stems from. But I get frustrated and I involuntarily cry. I keep everything in. I walk away and want to sort it out by myself to see if I caused it, what I could do to improve myself, what I could do to keep it from happening again. And um, that's just the way I am. Okay. I used to tell my kids that I take it until it's up to here and then God just makes it spew out of my eyes. So when I'm up here, you know, I've had enough. Um, but she went as far as to make fun of that. Crying is an involuntary coping mechanism, according to psychology textbooks and UCLA research. And it is a bodily function that some people cannot control. Okay. That's why crying on cue is something that, you know, not everybody can do. So, um, I, she made fun of that. Then she said some other things that were way out of line that are not fit for this podcast, but crying and making fun of someone for it is unacceptable. Okay. Crying is something they can't control. They can't do anything about there are personalities out there that do that and yes when I am frustrated in order to cope my body just does that and never should anyone be shamed for an involuntary reaction to something um, if you don't want to see it don't push me to the brink and it takes months of pushing me to that far it's not like I cry at the drop of a hat. It took months to get to that point. And she, she just went over the line. She went over the line and I don't need to live that stress and that frustrated. Matter of fact, RJ called me. Um, I don't know. It was a couple of days, like I think Thursday. And then he called me Saturday for no reason. I, I don't know what he was. I do now because when I called him and told him that I had quit my job, um, and that he'd have to go back to taking the dogs to the other vet, um, he, uh, said, I knew something was wrong. That's why I called you Saturday. So it was showing in my personal life as well. And that's not good. Um, if people around me know that I'm unhappy and if they all can tell that something's wrong, I've worked there a year. Why couldn't those people see that something was really wrong? You know, um, I don't know. So I am working on letting that go and being merciful and forgiving and just moving on because God has a plan and God has taken me to the next step. Oh, and I'm enjoying the ride. He'll put me where he wants me to be. If I'm not meant to be there, he has a place for me and I'm just going to trust in him. So it is what it is. You like that? I know I say it a lot, but it is what it is. Um, so I am in a better mood. I'm happier. Yes, a job search is stressful, and but it's normal everyday life stress. It's not, uh, 
as they say, up here, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it is. It's going to be an amazing ride. God is going to use me wherever he thinks I need to be. And I am relying on him to just show me. And what is funny is, so I uh, know in my heart and in my mind that God is in every bit of this because I put in an application, immediately got a call saying, can you come in tomorrow morning for an interview? Then, of course, I immediately got the call back. Well, it's in a, a business environment. And I have not worn business clothes since my daughter was small. Um, I quit working in the business world back when RJ was born. So I had an entire wardrobe of business clothes, you know, two or three pairs of slacks, two or three skirts, two or three pairs of flats, um, blouses. I have not worked in the business environment in that long. So when the, I got the second call back, I, I went to the first one. I was dressed appropriately. I had a collared shirt on. I did have jeans on though. It's all I own besides scrubs. So, um, I, uh, when he asked me if there was anything pertinent that he, I felt he needed to know, um, in the first interview, there were a couple of things that I felt you know, he needed to know that, uh, you know, my pay I had put, that I wanted X amount of dollars. It was a sliding, you know, I told him when you're looking online, some jobs say they're 32 to 36 hours is full time. If it's a four, 40 hour week, I know what I have to have pay wise to cover that. But if it's a 32 or 36, that's a whole day's pay it's difference. And I have to be able to make that up with the wage, with the hourly wage. So I, I talked to him about that. And I said, and finally, the last thing is that I want you to know um, that I'm coming for. And I, he looked at my resume and I said, you know, I did home health and then I did that. And I don't own any business ones. But if you look at the back at my resume, I had done loans and blah, blah, blah. And I said, I had an appropriate attire for there. I said, if you allow me to go on to the second um, interview, I said, I will be dressed appropriately. He said, not a problem. He said, that's it. It is what it is. And he said, I get that. And I totally understand. And I said, okay. So when I got the call back, I immediately ran to Goodwill because I am not going to go in jeans. So I go into Goodwill and this is how I know God is doing it karma, the universe, whatever you believe in, it has a hand in this because I went in and the section that has slacks that were my size, they had like a bright red pair, but it was almost the consistency of jeans. It looked like colored jeans. So, and they have the jeans separate, they have the leggings separate, and then they have the slacks. And in my size, there was hardly anything to choose from. And I'm pushing the hangers and there's one that somebody's done and laid up over the top and I moved it and I kept looking and I looked at sizes. I even went down to the, to the next size down to see if maybe somebody had put some down there and I had to move that thing again. So I finally take a look at the pair of pants that I am moving and guess what? They were laid out for me. Not only are they my size, they're a black pair of slacks and they fit perfect. I was like, hmm, it is definitely a God thing or whatever you, whatever you believe in, it has a hand in it. The, the circle of life, the karma, mojo, whatever. I believe in God. So therefore God laid them out for me. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I bought that and I found a cute little shirt. It's kind of business like a little jacket thing over it. And uh, I was like, hmm, so for $12, I got my interview stuff today, and I will be going to that interview here this morning, late morning, about 10 o'clock, and I'm good to go. So we'll see how it goes. Ugh. I have to stop yawning, and I need to drink more coffee, I guess. But um, I am recording in the morning so that I can get it done, and then when I come home, I won't have any stress at all. And my plan is to clean up my room. I got a pile of clothes and this is why my room is kind of trash. First, I want looking for yarn. 
I have a tote full of yarn and it's on half of my bed. And then I just scrunched it over and then I went through my closet to see what I had that was business-like before I went shopping and, you know, to come up with clothes that the, my collared top and that it looked business-like, it was okay, but I had jeans on. And so anyway, uh, then I piled clothes on it. Needless to say, there is very little room on my bed right now. <laughs> I need to make that bed. I got to put the pillows back together. I got to, yeah. So it is what it is, <laughs> but that's my plan for this afternoon. I'm going to go to that interview and then I'm going to keep myself occupied until I hear something. And I'm hoping to be able for them to tell me when I should hear something by. And I still have another interview set up with the vet clinic. So another vet clinic. So yeah, that's where it's going. And like I said, got to take care of it. So y'all have a great week. Um, enjoy your Memorial Day weekend and just be safe and know that God and I love you. Okay. So he's definitely working miracles in my life, no matter how big or small. And I am super happy with that. Still have the stress of everyday life, but it's nothing I can't handle. So, uh, I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.